What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about my biggest gaming disappointments so far in 2021. And I say gaming disappointments kind of ambiguously because it's not even about the games that came out so far this year. Uh, we'll talk about one in particular, and, and honestly, I only have one. I only have one game so far, I would say, that came out that was just such a difference from what I was hoping, not even expecting, just hoping for it, versus what we got. The rest that I've personally played, I've been very, very happy with. There's been many games that I've considered game of the year already, right? There's also delays that happened this year that we can throw in as well, okay? So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Let me know if you if you like these kinds of different videos. We can definitely do more of them uh, as the month goes on. July is a pretty dead month, and so we're going to be looking for some topics. Okay, the only game I want to talk about is Destruction All-Stars, uh, and it's actually a game I really liked. I liked the game. I enjoyed it in my... I played the game for like five, six days. I played it, I mean, I played a lot in the, I played it for like the first day. I played it easily four or five hours. I probably put close to 15 to 20 hours into that game and I enjoyed my time. I did. I just think immediately the game died. It came out. It was fun while it lasted, and uh, and it didn't go literally anywhere. It was too repetitive in the sense of the maps were just all the exact same. Uh, you know, the, the modes, I like some of them, but I really only played one of them. So overall, it was just, uh, and I, again, it's not that I was expecting it to be some sort of next level experience that lasted for years. I was hoping for it. I was hoping, now, could it have been like a Rocket League ever? No, not really. But a game that lasts like a long time. Could it, could it have been that? I think it could have. Uh, I think maybe it still can, but honestly, I've kind of lost all hope for that, okay? So that is the main game. In terms of everything else, everything else, I would say, comes from the kind of experiences we've had, right? Uh, Hogwarts Legacy kicked us off right in January, kicking us square in the face, saying that the game was delayed. Now, I respect them that they didn't wait throughout 2021. They didn't have people get real, including myself, right, because I talk about the game all the time. We weren't getting excited throughout the entire year saying, oh, my God, it's coming, it's coming, coming. Oh, it's delayed last second, last month before it came out. It's delayed till next year. That, I think, would have been much worse. But still, you know, I think it was January 14th or something like that that this happened immediately. You know, January hits. And within the first two, two and a half weeks, we get the announcement that one of, I don't think it's unfair to say, one of the biggest games of 2021 has been pushed. Gotham Knights then followed about a month or two later. Fantastic, right? It's just another one to add to the belt. And then you could say really, to, I guess to, to finish off the delay period, just the fact of games and we, I think, are at the tail end of this, right? But just the last little stretch of games that maybe had some hope just constantly being pushed and pushed and pushed because of the stuff around the world and games that were supposed to come out in 2020 that maybe got pushed to 2021 that now maybe aren't even coming out till next year, right? Those kind of games. Uh, Horizon kind of being unsure of when that game is coming out. Halo being relatively sure, but still, I, I, you know, you never know. God of War, obviously, the, a big one was delayed till next year. Lego Star Wars has had a, a lot of trouble, right? We did get games like Dying Light. Dying Light 2 finally got a release date. Uh, Prince of Persia got delayed indefinitely. I mean, you can keep going. I think I don't remember if Far Cry was announced the delay this year or last year, but Far Cry 6 was delayed. So all of these games, and I, you could probably keep going on, right? A lot of games, Call of Duty seemingly having trouble in the background. The list goes on. So that is obviously a big disappointment. Some of them are, uh, I think some of them were easier to read or easier to see coming than others. But really that in terms of the disappointment so far this year, I would argue delays probably are the biggest thing, right? It's kind of the thing that just keeps popping up, keeps persisting, keeps annoying people, which I think is very, very fair, and I don't blame people for that, right? Besides that, there's actually been the games that have released have actually done really well. One final thing I want to talk about in terms of disappointments so far is E3. Um... E3 was just absolute garbage. We, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I've talked about it in past videos. Xbox Bethesda, fantastic. Nintendo, pretty good. Pretty darn good. Square Enix, eh, okay. Uh, you know, Ubisoft, horrible. Take two. I mean, just go go knock yourself out and get taken away by a dumpster truck or something. Do something like that. But no, E3 overall, I think, was unnecessary and not needed. I think uh, besides Xbox Bethesda and maybe Nintendo, depending on if you're a Nintendo fan, besides that, there was no reason to have it. E3 whatsoever. So you could say that that's been another issue. In terms of delays, 
and communication, you could say, right? Poor communication from some of these games, some of these companies, Sony being one of them, right? The whole Days Gone 2 fiasco happened this year. So communication between company and consumer has been, uh, been a big issue. It's been rough. There's been a lot, you know, uh, I, I like to make these videos. I think people like watching them because it's more, it's, it's, it's kind of drama stuff, right? It's talking about the failures, the bad things that happen. There has been a lot of good. There really has. And I, and I think we'll talk about some games that I've really loved this year so far. But there's been a lot of good stuff. But uh, the bad, weirdly enough, really has come outside of the game's releasing. There's like three, four, or five games that I've considered game of the year like on the first couple days playing it. I'm like, yep, this is an amazing game. Like is as another level from other games. It's up there. And that's happened quite often. So the games we have gotten have been very solid. It's just it, I I would say the biggest thing again is just the fact that we haven't gotten certain games and a lot of these games have been pushed and a lot of these games have had very bad communication. That's been some of the weaker elements of this year. But with that being said, I've tried to be pretty picky on which games I've bought, so I haven't played uh, you know, all of the games that have released this year, so maybe there's some games that people had high hopes of and end up being terrible. You guys will have to let me know that in the comments below if there's any games that kind of disappointed you. Let me know. Make sure you guys are subscribed, bell icon turned on, leave a like. Definitely would help this kind of video, right? I don't know how well this kind of video will do, but leaving a like will absolutely help. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter or subscribe to the second channel or any of that other social media stuff, all of it is in the description below. Would love to have you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all on the next video.